Do you believe you have the right to use that money in any way that you see fit? This money belongs to the Islamic Republic of Iran, and naturally, we will decide, the Islamic Republic of Iran will decide to, es- to spend it wherever uh, we need it. That doesn't sound very encouraging. Joining me now, the great Lisa Taftari. She is back, the editor, of, editor-in-chief of the Foreign Desk. Lisa, okay, could you walk me through this like I'm dumb? Why did we give Iran, Iran, $6 billion? Did we give it to it? What, what happened here? So these are frozen assets. They do belong to the people of Iran. But will it go to the people of Iran? Definitely not. So we speculate, obviously, that it's going to go for weapons development. It's going to go for their proxies and supporting terror in the region like Hezbollah and Hamas and the Houthis in Yemen and the insurgencies in Syria and Iraq. And the list goes on and on. And um, here we go. They're basically admitting that they're going to spend it the way that they want. The the I don't know what's called irony, or it's really the, the the depressing part of all of this is that even with all the money and the lax policy that Washington has shown uh, the Iranian regime over the last uh, two and a half years, they are still rogue. They're not even on their best behavior to say thanks, thanks for the six billion dollars. Uh, this is a five for five prisoner exchange, meaning five prisoners on this side, five prisoners on that side. And let me tell you, it's already a lopsided deal because we actually have criminals and terrorists in our possession. And the five that they have are basically people who are visiting their family, uh, Iranian American nationals who are in prison because they're pawns, because we pay for those pawns. And what's to stop the Iran regime for gathering more Iranian Americans who go over there because there's a great cash buyout for them. Lisa, for those of us who don't understand, what's the difference between their supreme leader and their president? What kind of a government is this? Right. So basically, look, they're all the same, meaning anyone who is elected, even as mayor of a city in Iran right now, is part of the Islamic Republic. They're not going to be any freedom loving or justice uh, respecting individuals. They have to be okayed by uh, by these different committees. And the supreme leader is the end all be all, of course. And that's Khamenei. And he is like a million years old and he has 25 lives. So uh, he's 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 been around and he's going to be around. Uh, and now the president is President Ibrahim Raisi, who's also known as the butcher of Iran because he has so much blood on his hands from the different positions he served in the judiciary over the last 44 years. He has a history uh, of sending people to uh, be executed uh, and, and for supporting terrorism. Uh, and, um, you know, again, it's they're all cut from the same cloth. Years before, to your question, years before they've had elections and people get all excited, like, oh, Will will a reformist come in? Will someone better come in? Uh, And they had a few chances at reformist candidates. But again, because they have to be approved uh, by this uh, system, by by this government, there will never be any reform under this government. And that is where we come to today. This weekend, we celebrated the one-year anniversary of the Masa Amini death and the protest that ensued afterwards, which was September 16th of last year. Uh, And this is the first time in 44 years we've seen a lot of protests, different kinds of protests all throughout the country. This is the first time over the last year that we're seeing so much unity. And they're saying no to reforms, no to any sort of concessions. They want the regime gone. They are asking for regime change. And we saw protests over the weekend in Iran and around the world supporting them in that cause. Okay, when they call for regime change, they're calling for the president gone, not the supreme leader? Or do I have that wrong? the entire system. So you're talking about the Supreme Leader, you're talking about the Revolutionary Guard, you're talking about the military that is that is loyal to the government. Everything has to, to, to shift. Basically like what happened in 1979 with the toppling of the Shah's regime, uh, the Shah's government, and then you had this government come in, which is a complete theocracy governed by Sharia law. That is why the 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 value of a woman is half of that in the court of law, where women cannot file for divorce, even if they're being beaten bloody uh, in their marriages. Uh, So many different laws that are just and this this 22 year old woman, Masa Amini, was beaten to death because her hijab was a little further back on her head. So go figure in uh, 2023, the people of Iran are saying this is not for us. 
uh, we don't want this, we need more going forward. And um, the Biden administration, unfortunately, has not only not supported them in that endeavor, but has taken away a lot of opportunity for them to move forward in this movement by giving $6 billion, a lifeline to this regime, by being lax on the sanctions, by allowing Raisi to come to New York. It's a symbolic slap in the face to the Iranian people who are being just suffocated. It's also a slap in the face for anybody who is a champion of women's rights, gay rights, any rights. Um, and I, I'm speaking to those on the left who think they're these su superior champions of human rights. When you do not see this, when you are not taking a stand against this, you are absolutely on the wrong side. This is somebody who will hang someone for being gay, will hang someone for, will beat someone to death because they're showing a little bit of their hair. Uh, so I think there, there needs to be a lot more awareness uh, of this on both sides of the political aisle. And of course, the Iranian people are looking towards the 2024 election and thinking maybe they'll have a better chance under a different president in the United States. Lisa, from the outside looking in, it's not hard to see why Iran would cozy up to bigger, more powerful countries like Russia and China. But what a lot of people don't understand is what Russia or China would get out of a relationship with Iran. Could you explain? Sure. I mean, look, traditionally, if any any country in the world, and no matter how big or small, would be under uh, U.S. sanctions, it would mean a lot of penalty for them. It would mean a lot of uh, missed opportunity in terms of trade, private and public, in terms of uh, obviously being part of the global community, etc. Now, uh, over the last few years, we have seen the rogue nations of the world say, we don't have to really care. We don't have to show any sort of behavioral change for these sanctions. What we could do is work around them and really stick it to the United States. And how can we do that? Well, we'll work together. Not only can we work together to evade sanctions and teach each other how to evade sanctions, but it could be really lucrative. And that's exactly what's happening here. So Russia is buying weapons and weapons parts from Iran's regime, from China, and from North Korea. Even North Korea has been selling parts to Russia for a, a while now, and over the weekend we saw this whining and dining in this courtship um, of Kim by Russia. They even got to go to a Russian ballet. Um, so we see these relationships blossoming. Look, China even brokered a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran just a few months ago. The United States was sleeping on all of this. The fact that our enemies are not only working around U.S. sanctions, meaning working around U.S. policy, but thriving um, with each other and, and really leaving the United States and, and the West in the dark. BRICS is another great example of that. They met to come up with a new form of currency, not only to stick it to the United States, but to really devalue the U.S. dollar globally, to end U.S. supremacy, to end leadership of the United States all throughout the world. And it looks like they're going to be inviting rogue nations like Iran to the, to the mix uh, to, to have a new currency. Everyone can trade. Nobody's under sanctions. No one's being punished. And all of a sudden, overnight, they find themselves having all these new trading partners, public and private deals that can get them, you know, a lot of a lot of profit would be very lucrative for them. All right. Lisa, thank you so much. Come back soon. Of course. Thank you.